Welcome back for part 3 of my series on staying alive in STO PvP. This builds on parts 1 and 2, so check those out if you haven't already. In the last two videos, I talked about resistances and healing, both topics that deal with damage done to our hull and temporary hull. This one's going to be all about reducing damage before it even gets that far. The first thing I want to cover is shields. To make things simple, there are basically two types of shields, resilient and everything else. Resilient shields have 5% bleed through compared to the 10% bleed through of other shield types. Key to understanding this is that regardless of your shield hardness, the bleed through is always the same. Basically, this means that we can reduce the amount of damage we take to our shields, but the amount of damage that goes through them will be the same no matter how much hardness we stack. Shield hardness reduces the amount of damage our shields take from an attack. One of the easiest ways to increase shield hardness is with the buff ability, Emergency Power to Shields. The level 3 of this ability adds 30% shield hardness, for example, and there's a hardness cap of 75%. This one is a bit easier to understand, too. There aren't any diminishing returns as there are with damage resistance. If we have 30% hardness and add another source of 30% somehow, that's just 60% hardness. There are some ways to reduce bleed through, for example the Steam Runner Resonance Cascade Console or the Max Shields Competitive Consumable. These both have a tooltip that reads, prevents normal damage from bleeding through shields. This sounds pretty great but usually falls flat in practice because things that have shield penetration buff or ignore shields still apply. For example, the trait Self-Modulating Fire or One Big Happy Fleet both provide a 50% shield penetration buff so an attacker using one of those will still cut through with 50% of their damage going to your hull anyway. I could delve into the math behind it all, but there are better written guides for that than I can convey in a video. The important things to take away as far as shields is that number one, you never want to have zero shields, and number two, a lot of investment into extra hardness isn't all that worthwhile with so many shield penetrating weapons and traits available. There's a balance to be struck here, of course, and it's all up to the individual build and playstyle. I should also mention that the skill tree Shield Mastery and Shield Absorption is fairly important for PvP. It gives you immunity to a critical hit every 20 seconds, and that hit becomes a shield heal. So in a normal PvP battle, your shields are being completely replenished often just from this skill alone. That's also why I don't normally carry any shield heals on my PvP healer. On a good team, everyone's shields are up most of the time anyway. The next one I want to cover is defense rating. On more than one occasion, I've seen someone say something along the lines of escorts with high speed don't need healing because of defense. This is pretty bad advice. Defense caps out at a slow 24 impulse speed, so for the most part, any ship is hitting their defense cap all the time. Each ship does have a hidden defense value, however, so there is some truth to that part. For example, the recent Jurok Carrier goes from as low as negative 15 defense when stopped and up to 45 defense at speed. On the other hand, the Andorian Pilot Escort has 60 defense at the same speed. It's also not cut and dry. The Nova Pilot Science Ship, which I would expect as a small, nimble ship to have high defense, also caps out at 45, the same as the very slow Jurok Carrier. We can get more defense from various traits, abilities, and the skill tree, but I'm not sure I'd recommend spending too much time on it. I think the term defense might confuse people as well. It isn't a damage reduction per se, it only affects the chances of an enemy ship hitting us. This is yet another thing with a 75% cap. Even if we had infinite defense, we would still be hit by 25% of weapon attacks. Science ships don't care about defense because they hinge on abilities which have a guaranteed hit chance. Other ships using weapons for damage have access to a lot of accuracy and defense hasn't kept up accordingly. Quick example, if my ship has 60 defense, any attacker with 60 or more accuracy has a 100% chance to hit. Even my free-to-play dogfighter build has an accuracy as high as 135 but I've never seen a ship with defense that high except in short bursts or from consoles like Molecular Phase Inversion. The next one is short because as far as I know, there's only one source of it, dodge. The engineering R&D trait, Give Your All, provides a 3 second dodge that avoids 20% of incoming damage whenever we activate an engineering ability. This can actually stack as well, so if we hit Aux to Sif and Emergency Power, that is 40% of incoming damage dodged for a few seconds. 
it sounds kind of like it should reduce hit chance like defense, but it's an entirely different mechanic. When we get hit, 20% of that hit just disappears into nothing and the remaining 80% is applied to us. I would run this trait on just about any PvP build. Alright, so let's talk about the really good stuff, placates. I've posted some other videos where I talked about countering these, but this time I'll come at it from a defensive perspective. When you placate your attacker, your ship disappears visually and they cannot attack you for a few seconds. One of the most commonly used placates in PvP is the Aux to Sif Duty Officer. There are four variants of this doff. You can get them from the Exchange or from the Delta Operations Expansion Pack. They can be expensive, but it's extremely useful to have on your build, and if you bide your time, you can get one for a reasonable price. I paid 40 million for the one on my free account, and only a few days later, a second one popped up for only 7 million. I'll post the names of those duty officers on the screen here so you can search for them when you have time and save up for them. If you're fed aligned, yours will probably be drastically cheaper as well. Now this isn't a surefire way to survive, as an attacker can use engineering team to clear this placate. But in the heat of combat, I think players miss that activation window, or they have to use their engineering team defensively to clear a subsystem offline. Either way, it keeps the heat off and a short invisibility is a great way to change your positioning to throw off your attacker and gain an advantage. Another important placate is from the personal trait Pseudo Submission. This placates anyone who has you targeted when you heal, and even better, it can't be cleared except by narrow sensor bands. It's especially useful in matches with multiple ships as it can save you if you're being focused and you fly close to a few friendly ships because your opponents will be trying to target you specifically because you're the weakest target. If you placate them, they end up shooting your teammates instead and you can recover. Of course, this all depends on your team and it's also one of the reasons I think people sometimes feel a bit bullied in PvP. Many times when I'm in a pug match, I'll be chasing another good player and they'll placate me and my weapons will still go off and hit whoever the next available target is, usually someone unprepared for it. Basically, except for very specialized tank builds, you need a placate otherwise you're going to take the brunt of incoming damage. But now we're starting to get into arena tactics and that is definitely outside the scope of this video. Jam Sensors is another placate worth mentioning, but ultimately it is not particularly useful because it self-clears when you deal damage to the target. I experimented with a duty officer that increases the damage threshold, but the damage appears to be pre-resist, so if you jam sensors then attack, it basically clears it off almost immediately if you do decent damage. It can also be cleared by Science Team, but it's still worth mentioning. There are also shields with a placate effect, like the Adapted Mako and Competitive Shields. This placate is only one second long, however, so it's not a huge factor. In short, definitely have some placates on your build. Even though they have direct counters, it still makes you that much harder to defeat. Next one, Intel Team and Exodus. This is always a hot topic in PvP circles, and there's not a lot of good info on it readily available. Intel Team is not a placate, it gives the user stealth. However, unlike placates or the stealth from cloaking, the ship does not actually disappear. You'll still be visible just in a greenish color. Intel Team takes one second to activate, during which you can be attacked normally, and lasts for nine seconds. With the trait fresh from R&R, we can use teams every 10 seconds, so you'll see PvP builds that activate Intel Team on a constant cycle. These builds can be extremely effective against opponents with low perception and completely ineffective against others. Every player ship has 5,000 perception by default. If we use Intel Team 3, we get 4,680 stealth, which means other ships can target us at about 6.4 kilometers. Exodus Active Probat gets us another 500 stealth, so that's 5,180 stealth now, so we can't even be targeted at 0 kilometers by a basic player ship. That's why the relatively small 500 stealth from Exodus is such a big deal. But even Intel Team on its own is still effective because it forces your enemy to get closer to you to attack. This is also why players are so divided on this. Players who don't understand the perception mechanic will encounter an Intel Team or Exodus build and have no idea how to counter it. On the other hand, some players go out and buy Exodus expecting it will be a game-breaking advantage for them, only to run into high-end PvPers who kill them anyway. If we're using Intel Team or Exodus and come up against an enemy ship with increased perception, or science ships with have an innately higher base perception, Intel Team starts to lose its effectiveness. 
If our attacker has drastically more perception than we have stealth, they can target us even if we activate Intel Team, so it becomes a bit of a tug of war where we try to increase our stealth and our opponents keep increasing their perception. That's also why I wouldn't universally recommend a ship with Intel seating for everyone in PvP. It's certainly an effective card to have up our sleeve, but at the high end of the game it does start to fall off. It can be pushed to an extreme though, as it's currently easier to increase stealth much more drastically than perception. I'm hoping one day for a rebalance because at the moment all it really does is create a barrier to entry for new PvPers who don't understand perception. But it would have to be done very delicately as I wouldn't want Intel ships to lose their effectiveness completely. As always, thanks for watching. I plan to do a few more build videos talking about higher end builds, as well as some guides for the offensive side of this. But since the primary complaints are usually about survivability, I wanted to focus on that first. Hopefully, some players will listen to my advice and build some tougher ships and will actually have to worry about doing more damage later. I'm not sure where the idea that PvPers just want one-shot kills come from, but I assure you what we actually want is more players with good builds that are a proper challenge. I want to stress that a good PvP build will have something from all three parts of this video series. You can't rely on just one thing because almost everything has a direct counter, so your defenses have to be multi-layered. I didn't want this video to get too long, but I'll do a short bonus guide on escape consoles and how critical they are to any build with so many controls and holds in the game. I'd also like to mention that you can reach out to me on Reddit or Discord, and I'll do my best to answer questions and help out if you're interested in getting involved. And my community does PvP events and build help sessions frequently, so it's a great way to try it out and have some fun with other like-minded players. Just last year, there are lots of players who went from knowing nothing about PvP to competing at the highest levels of the game, so all it takes is a bit of enthusiasm and guidance.